Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Multiple updates out on stimulus and I want to start by talking about the retroactive unemployment pay. We've got some insights out now on this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get some insights directly from Republicans and Democrats. We're going to look at a few interviews that are going to give us a lot more information about what the heck is going on in stimulus. These next eight days are going to be pretty tense. After all, the deadline to get a stimulus package done is December 11th. If we don't get a stimulus package, we might just get a continuing resolution to kick the can down the road on government funding, and we could be twiddling our thumbs until January, probably until late January, which is extremely frustrating. So these next eight days are going to be very, very crucial. Also, Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell are talking again. This is a huge shift. Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell haven't realistically had conversations since this summer, since before August. Because once August came around, Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell, Steve Mnuchin, and Mark Meadows decided that Mark Meadows and Mnuchin would actually lead a stimulus negotiation to get something done with Nancy Pelosi. The deal was, let's get Democrats and Nancy Pelosi and Mark Meadows together, and then we'll present it to, and we'll get the White House on board, and then we'll convince Republicans in the Senate. That didn't work. That failed. Well, today, Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi are talking again. And when we reference some of these interviews, we'll be able to get some insights into exactly what's going on. Uh, on the proposal, by the way, the $908 billion proposal, it is not a bill yet. It is a proposal. We know that Mitch McConnell prefers his smaller one between $550 to $600 billion. But what we do know or what we're hearing reports of now is that there might be or should be retroactive unemployment pay right now, and we don't have the text yet. I don't even think there is text for this bill yet. It's just an outline of a proposal or what a bill could look like. We know that Nancy Pelosi wants retroactive unemployment pay. People who have been receiving the unemployment boost this summer have not received an unemployment boost check since probably the first or second week of September, which means people have gone most of September, October, and November without unemployment pay. There is talk that the unemployment boost will be retroactive to at least December 1st, potentially November 1st. But September and October, probably not going to happen. Even November is up in the air. And it's only December 3rd, so retroactive to December 1st doesn't seem like it's much charity here. Even if they pass this on December 11th and it's signed into law, great, we're talking about 11 days of retroactive unemployment pay. But that is the latest that we have on unemployment and a potential boost for unemployment payments. Let's now get some updates though from Chuck Grassley to see what we can glean about what's going on between Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi. Senator Chuck Grassley did have COVID, he was asymptomatic and has recovered. He's 87 years old. Let's listen in to his thoughts on stimulus. Uh, Senator, it's always good to have, let's get right to the mechanics here. Sure. This, this $908 billion stimulus measure that's out there, are you for it, are you open to it? Uh, I'm open to it within these parameters. Uh, the, the, the dollar amount, as long as it doesn't get higher, would be maybe acceptable, but what's in it? Uh, I'm not a big fan for a lot of money for state and local, but there's so many things that have bipartisan support already. And the most important thing is, I think there is a general understanding among all Republicans that we need to do something. And, and as long as that figure is lower than higher, and it can't be as ridiculous as two and two tenths trillion dollars that Pelosi wanted, and it better not get more than 900 billion dollars wow okay i'm gonna pause here for a second because he just said a lot first of all he just he just drew a line in the sand said it better not get bigger than 900 billion dollars he basically just dis is starting to at least destroy nancy pelosi's ability to negotiate by him drawing a red line saying no 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 no, we're not going over one bill that makes any kind of suggestions for improvement that Nancy Pelosi was considering, you know, bringing out, which we haven't heard of yet, but we see, you know, or we will see. She at least mentioned in her letter that she would su suggest improvements, which we're hoping that'll include stimulus checks. But when we have Republicans drawing the line in the sand here saying, ah, uh, 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 we're not going over 900, and stimulus checks the last time cost somewhere around $270 billion, uh, that's not looking good. That is not looking good. It's also not looking good that uh, this is a senator saying, I don't want to see a lot of state and local government funding in there. And on that, I have to reference what Andrew Cuomo said this morning. He said, look, you know, it's one thing if the federal government helps drop off a bunch of doses of this vaccine to us, but the reality is we don't have money to set up the tents and the facilities and the support staff to actually get people vaccinated. Now, maybe that can be done through doctor offices, but then again, the, the you know, logistics, the supply chain has to be moved 
moved around and uh, divided up into different doctor offices. So all of a sudden, you've got Andrew Cuomo over in New York going, we got no money. We need state and local government just to be able to pay these COVID expenses. Los Angeles is threatening to lay off hundreds of policemen and women because they don't have any money left. Now, obviously, both of these are uh, Democratic areas or regions. You know, one's a state, obviously, one's a city. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the reality is Congress could put together some kind of bill that says state and local government funding is allocated for specifically these purposes. They could wordsmith it and do the right thing and provide the support that state and local governments need. And, uh, and, and we just need to do something, and I think there's a good chance we can do something. Uh, you quoted Schumer, Pelosi, McCarthy. Uh, I think you uh, would uh, hear, get good uh, vibes from, uh, from McConnell today on this. Uh, so I think there's a good chance we can accomplish something, and we should accomplish something. That's really good. Okay, so good vibes from McConnell and Chuck Grassley, despite being anti, clearly being anti-spending, clearly being anti-state uh, and local government spending, is saying that he thinks we can get something done and uh, that we're really close. So that's good. This sort of echoes what Donald Trump mentioned this morning. Donald Trump this morning said we are very close to getting a deal done. Though we've heard Donald Trump say those sorts of things before when we weren't quite close yet. So let's jump on over to another interview. So what we have here is a, a group of Problem Solvers Caucus members holding a news briefing. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to the Q&A. This is where we're going to get the more interesting information. Let's listen in. As we put the final details together, obviously the details matter. And so I would anticipate until that final detail package is out there, we'll get a, the, the formal commitment uh, of support from all the players uh, that you're talking to, uh, about. That's huge. So he's saying, hey, look, obviously we're doing those verbal negotiations now. Then we're going to get a detailed proposal outline, not just this sort of outline, but maybe we'll actually write the whole bill and then we can get everybody on board. The bill is going to have the details. Remember, as we were saying, the, the devil is in the details. That's where we really want to pay attention to. Let's see what else they say. But that being said, a public indication from the White House, a public indication from our leadership in the House in regards to Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, as well as now momentum building on both sides of the, uh, of the aisle bodes well for the fact that this is the package that moved the needle to get people to say we would support this level of support uh, going out to the American people. So that, I think that is a very positive development and I would take it as a positive sign. Problem Solvers Caucus here is taking credit for essentially saying, hey, look, we talked to so many people, we were able to figure out that both sides would be willing to do something around $900 billion. That's why we're here. Again, doesn't bode well for stimulus checks, but it's it's good that at least we've got something in common here. Now we just have to get the final details etched out into agreement. Now we move on to him being asked, doesn't the onus fall on Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy now to come up towards what Nancy Pelosi is willing to take, which is $908 billion? Remember this morning we talked about how Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell are kind of digging in on the $550 to $600 billion deal, though they do say they are open to negotiating and they appreciate that Nancy Pelosi is open to negotiating. So no hard lines from Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell, though they do have they do favor their plan. Well, maybe on our side of that, just when you have the president now coming out and moving uh, in the direction of this uh, uh, proposal, and you saw the Democratic leadership moving in the direction of this proposal, we we're in the zone, uh, and we knew through the conversations uh, that going back and forth and truly listening to each other, uh, that 900 billion dollars uh, was where that common ground uh, was. And so, uh, you know, I think we're going to get there and let's just defer to them as to how they're going to respond to that direct question. But I will tell you, I'm very confident, uh, given now the nature of the developments, and, that we're there. And I'm just saying the key here is 908, which is the number we've been focused on, as you know, and, and, and driving toward where we've been able to find both support in the House and the Senate and the priorities underneath it. Right. It's not just it's not just the number. It's also what what we agreed to, as you and you all know, the outlines of the package. Uh, so I think those priorities have to be will, will continue to be front and center. And as we have these discussions and draft the legislation in the next day or two. Yeah, there's no doubt that there are so many better priorities in the $908 billion package compared to the uh, the, the smaller 550 to $600 billion package. Uh, it's interesting, though, none of them are indicating that we might be able to go up in the number. Senator Grassley obviously wants something small. This is the bipartisan group. They're, they're not saying let's go down or let's go up. They're saying 
this is it. Kind of interesting. I'm surprised none of them are bringing up stimulus checks. The next question was, have there been any conversations with Mitch McConnell about this bipartisan bill? Obviously, we keep them apprised as to what we're doing. Uh, we are having conversations, like I mentioned, with uh, Cory Gardner, and we've been talking to leadership in the in the Senate as well as the, their teams. Um, the, obviously, we get we're public positioning and, and what they have to do. So we won't speak for them. And we keep those conversations, the detailed conversations, private because that's important mm -hmm. to our credibility and the ability to do the business that we do in getting people to find that common ground and talk to each other. So uh, I'll defer to them as to where they end up. But I will just tell you, when you see people and the momentum going in the right direction, I think uh, uh, right. time in short order will show that we're in the area where we're going to land this plane. That's interesting. Big statement there. Basically saying, hey, look, you, you might not be hearing from Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell. They might be working in the background on that the private stuff, the way they do it. But know that when you start seeing Trump come out and you start seeing Republicans like Grassley or Democrats come out and everybody's circling around the same $908 billion bill, you kind of get a little bit of a tell that that's probably what we're going to end up with. The next reporter asks, what about Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi wanting more money for state and local governments and vaccine distribution? How do you handle their counteroffer, essentially? Now, we do not yet have an official counteroffer, but this is what a reporter asks. So let's see what the answer is. Well, I spoke to the speaker this morning again. We continue to have conversations and, and we had meetings with our, our group, with our Senate colleagues this morning. I think everybody, I, I really believe we're, we're very, very close. The language, of course, as Tom just said, is critically important. It's what we're working on now in the bill. And I think that uh, that some of the debates will will you know find their way onto those pages as we wrap this up. Uh, but I, I believe, we're, I think from, from the feedback I've gotten is we're, we're just about there. The question now is in the language of the bill, making sure that we, what we put on the page gets onto those pages. Interesting. Okay. So, I mean, really, I don't, I can't say that he exactly answered the question. He basically said, Hey, we're writing the bill. We're working on it. Like we're, we're writing it up. He didn't tell us that. Yeah. You know, we'd consider going up a little bit. Just said we're close. It's going to be interesting to see exactly where this ends up. Uh, but you can bet Nancy Pelosi today is trying to push for some extra add-ins. No talk though about stimulus checks. It does make me a little bit nervous though that Probably not going to see those for Christmas, even though they could. I mean, if they passed this bill on the 11th and it included checks, they'd be out by Christmas Eve to tens of millions of Americans. So a reporter just asked, hey, what's the time frame for this bill coming out? Uh, this individual actually leaned into another person's ear and it was so quiet. I'm just giving you the recap. And it sounded like he said something about Monday. But let's see what his actual official reply here is. Well, All right, here we go. I'll offer two things. Um, you know, obviously, we've been at this for many months in regards to uh, um, the, the framework that you see here in the $908 billion uh, proposal. So legislative text has been floating out there in pieces. Um, so that text is out there, if you would. And staff has been doing yeoman's work in regards to working with us on a day-to-day uh, -day basis and a, a tireless basis to uh, put this together. And so I, I think you'll see the text be built. We're trying to shoot for over the weekend here as we uh, try to land yeah, this plane. Monday. Um, but the bottom line is I'm not concerned about the text so much being a delay uh, issue because so much time has been prepared and dedicated to that as we speak. And you were going to... That's actually interesting already. I was, I personally was getting nervous thinking, geez, man, if they just now get the outline together, how are they going to get the bill written and approved by the Congressional Budget Office or at least reviewed by it? What about the Office of Legal Affairs? They have to review it. Then it's got to get voted on. You only got six business days left. Ooh, this was a really good question. So the next reporter says, hey, you know, given that you're getting so much positive feedback to this bipartisan proposal, do you think that next year in the next Congress, we're going to have more moderates working together rather than just hating on each other on the extremes left and right? Uh, well, I believe I'll just say that common sense will be what dictates in the next Congress. And I think the idea, this, this model of how we're working together to me is exactly the model to get things done in the next Congress, right? And, and Democrats and Republicans coming together, yeah. not just here, but obviously given the narrow majorities working together with our Senate colleagues. So now I'm, I'm not thinking I'm, I'm trying not to focus on next year. We got to focus on getting this done now. And, and I, but I think this is the model with how we actually can get things done versus people screaming at each other and yelling at each other. You know, this is the right approach. Oh, 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 this reporter just said, I heard some members say they want stimulus checks. 
Okay. Whew. Let's see what the Problem Solvers Caucus replies with. Uh, I, I do not know what the answer to this yet is yet, but we do know that Ro Khanna, Rashida Tlaib, uh, and other mostly Democratic representatives have been calling, demanding stimulus checks. You're going to try to get that in there? You, you You're going to try to get that in there? You know, as you know, everything's about putting things down and trying to get it, trying to get what you can get. And we, we've been working around the clock, as Tom has said, with this group behind us for weeks. There's things we'd all, there's things we'd all like more of. But the bottom line is, um, we believe you're talking, whether you're talking about helping people um, with with unemployment, whether you're talking about nutrition and making sure those who, as Dean showed this, showing the picture, you've got people with the first time in the food lines uh, and, and making sure we've got support in there for them and for our schools and for childcare and for rental assistance. So many of the priorities that we all care about are, are in the and the, and the values we believe in and fight for are in on this 908. And I believe that's going to be what we're going to fight for in the next days to make sure that that's what happens. All right. I think uh, one last question. He just totally blew the guy's question off. And this is so freaking annoying. Like, the question is, are you going to include stimulus checks? Why don't you just say no? But instead, he's got to go, well, you know, we think of, we're spending money helping people and, you know, by giving them unemployment pay and, and by giving them child care credits and uh, the rental relief. Those are all important. But come on, man, a check in the mail is important, too. So basically, we just got to know from the Problem Solvers Caucus that right now, stimulus checks are not uh, a, a discussion point here. The way they blew that off, stimulus checks are not a discussion point. And they certainly aren't in the um, in, in the McConnell package. So let's go ahead and get to the next interview. Now this one, I just want to apologize. The quality of the video is horrible, but you can hear the audio decently. So let's, let's listen to what Joe Manchin says. He is a Democrat, and he's the one who uh, introduced or sort of announced this bipartisan package. Of us committed, enough of my colleagues are committed, uh, that we won't go home until we get a relief package. This is called a COVID emerg emergency relief package. That's exactly what it is. It's emergency relief. It is not the do-all, end-all. This is not the last thing that will be done. When Vice President uh, and President-elect Joe Biden becomes president, his administration will look at where we are economically in this country and make decisions if any more is not needed. This, by the way, is consistent with what we've been expecting in regards to this stimulus package, that this package would get done. As Biden says, it will be a down payment, and then Biden will pick up the rest. That's his opinion. Biden's plan is, of course, for $600 per week in unemployment pay, stimulus checks, and substantial support via free money grants, could be forgivable PPP loans or otherwise, to businesses. Let's go ahead and listen to Senator Ron Wyden. Let's see what he says about $600 per week in unemployment uh, boost payments. It's great to have you, sir. And would you be comfortable with a $300 a week figure? I wouldn't. And the fact is, the person who is least interested in real compromise, actual compromise where working families get a fair shake, the this person who's least interested in a real compromise is Mitch McConnell. He has basically said it is my way or the highway. I mean, the fact is, on his proposal, it actually shrunk what he was offering previously. For example, that that's true. I mean, previously he had like the Heels Act, and he was offering three hundred dollars a week, and his Mitch McConnell's current proposal offers zero dollars in unemployment boosts. It just extends your ability to get unemployment for a month. You know, I can't help but feel like Nancy Pelosi, Mitch McConnell are like the alliance and the horde. They will just never get along. Temple, there was no weekly boost in unemployment. Now, when I negotiated the original agreement with Steve Mnuchin on behalf of the Trump administration, both sides gave. We gave. They gave. Mitch McConnell sure isn't doing any giving now, but we're interested in trying to find common ground that protects workers and helps our country when we're having record numbers of coronavirus cases. So obviously, Ron Wyden is a big proponent of the $600 per week program. It's unlikely we're going to see that, though. Let's instead go on over to Senator Dick Durbin. He's actually on the Problem Solvers, uh, sort of, or works with the Problem Solvers Caucus in the House as part of the group of bipartisan senators. So for the last several weeks, we put together a bipartisan group of senators and members of the House. We sat down and said, what can we agree on in terms of COVID-19 relief now, this week? 
What can we do? And we came up with a $908 billion bill. Mark Warner, Joe Manchin, Gene Shaheen, Angus King on our side, Collins, Murkowski, uh, Cassidy, and, and uh, Romney, of course, on the other side. And we've got a bill we want to be called on the floor of the Senate. We don't want to go home and face the reality of what's going to happen at the end of this month. 12 million Americans are going to lose their unemployment insurance the day after Christmas. Merry Christmas. We're going to see 30,000 airline workers losing their jobs in Illinois. We're going to see other small businesses closing because there's no money available to help them to, to try to survive this. There is, this is inexcusable. We have got to move forward and we want our bill called. He is correct, by the way, regular unemployment payments for those who have maxed their benefit, which is a lot of folks, will end. That state-funded 39 weeks will end December 26th, literally a day after Christmas. Let's now jump ahead and see what he gets asked about Mitch McConnell. It's Willie Geist, the majority leader, has already said, Mitch McConnell, that he's not particularly interested in, in this new bipartisan effort. So if he's not interested and he can't rally Republicans around it, how do you change that dynamic? How do you get this through? Well, we're hopeful that some of the Republican members that have told us privately that they're upset with that decision by McConnell will step up when the time comes for a vote. If they tell him that it's not business as usual, we're not going to spend Christmas Day here in Washington because Senator McConnell doesn't want a matter even debated on the floor of the United States Senate. If enough Democrats and Republicans say that, I think we can force the issue. All right, let's get one more update in here. Let's see what uh, we've got here. This is what Speaker Pelosi put forward. Uh, it mentioned marijuana more than it mentioned jobs. It had a bailout for billion, millionaires and billionaires in big blue states. Now, that was not really a proposal meant to attract attention. I will go back to what I said earlier. If it's not bipartisan, it is a messaging bill. I mean, that's honestly, it's not a terrible point. Uh, I, like, yeah, I get the marijuana thing. That was... Uh, Democrats should have thought about that when it came to the HEROES Act, but we're so far beyond the HEROES Act now. But I, I agree with what he's saying here. He's saying, look, we need bipartisanship. We, we, we got to have, we got to talk about these bills together before we just whip them together. Quite frankly, the HEROES Act, I mean, I thought it would have been put together by a bipartisan group. Nope. They put together a 2,200-page bill and wasted all that time on their own without talking to Republicans. I don't know. To me... <laughs> That's not a good sign. Like, you'd be better off putting together a piece of paper with a bullet point list, <laughs> you know, and spending all the time doing that, but, uh, oh well. That was a messaging bill. This is bipartisan. This is a bill that sends a message that we can pass a bill that we care about the American people. I would not look too harshly upon the leader not considering the HEROES Act, Speaker Pelosi's bill, because it was a messaging bill. This is a bill that can pass. Wow. Do you believe this can get done uh, by the end of next week? Uh, Senator Durbin said he does. Are you optimistic? I don't know. I mean, there's a big spending bill that we have to pass, the National Defense Authorization Act. In the lineup of that which must pass, maybe those two come first, uh, or maybe not. But I do think the progress we've made, the support, and I can't emphasize enough, Judy, people from either side of the party coming up to give solutions to a, a problem that we know, okay, Republicans are bringing a solution that we know Democrats care about, would you be okay with it, and vice versa, that is progress. There's a heck of a lot of goodwill going into finding a product that uh, Republicans and Democrats in the House and the Senate can agree upon. That's what gives me encouragement. Okay, so this is the latest. We got a lot of indications that it looks like we should be focused on $908 billion, but maybe not stimulus checks. Maybe, yes, retroactive unemployment through December 1st, but that's not going to be retroactive for very long. It's certainly not going to be retroactive through September, which was a Nancy Pelosi priority, at least prior to the election. So uh, it looks like a lot of enthusiasm around this bill getting done next week. I'd like to say I'm jumping up and down in enthusiasm, but we've been let down so many times before. I can't do that. I just I can't do it anymore. Uh, so I will keep my fingers crossed and keep providing updates. If you like this, consider sharing it. Make sure to get your four free stocks with Weeble when you deposit $100 and get life insurance in as little as five minutes. Via the link down below. You don't have to talk to anybody. Just Apple Pay or Android Pay for it. And folks, we'll see you next time.